Uh, may I have the privilege of inviting on stage uh, Dr. Saurav Datta, Conference Advisory Committee member, chairman, and former executive director, IDBI Bank, to be joined in by his uh, wonderful panelists on stage, Mr. Sunil Sharma, Director, Enterprise Sales, Kalera. Can we also have uh, Mr. Deepu, KV Deepu, Senior President, Operations and Customer Service, Bajaj Aliens. Thank you, Deepu, sir, for joining us today. Mr. V.G. Senthil Kumar, DGM and Head Marketing and Branding, Bank of Baroda. Welcome, Senthil, sir. Mr. Shivji Meena, currently advisor and consultant at Punjab and Sindh Bank. Meena, sir, welcome on stage. And Mr. Vijayendra Sharma, Head of Marketing at CSB Bank. Welcome, Mr. Sharma. So this will run approximately for 45 minutes. And uh, over to you, Datta, sir. And still good morning. Uh, all right, so let's get into this uh, customer service. So we had an, in the uh, morning, we had uh, some introductory discussion on the DPDP, right, and privacy. So as uh, from an Indian uh, context perspective, as rightly mentioned, we are still uh, not very uh, aware about the privacy. We randomly share our uh, Aadhaar cards and uh, whatever details anybody wants happily, right? So that has been a challenge. Now coming to customer service, right? So customer service basically is, uh, to me, basically two components. One is when the customer gets onboarded, and the second piece is when the problem comes, right? So onboarding and doing service on the, uh, on the platform, the platform is basically digital now. So on the platform and then the customer service, which is again digital in nature, right? So you have call centers which are uh, getting fewer and fewer over the time, right? Because uh, two components, one is the, uh, the cost and secondly that the approach the companies are taking, they're saying that their digital platforms are so uh, flexible and so comfortable for the users that they can solve it. So to give an example is that you don't have any call centers for Uber, right? So any problems you face, you have to get it solved on the mobile itself. If it is, it gets solved, yes, good. But if it doesn't, it's your problem, right? And with a platform like Uber, for example, or any uh, travel aggregator, there will be always problems. So there's more problems than solutions. Coming back to the BFSI sector, again, BFSI sector, there are issues because what happens is that most of the time, some of the, uh, some of the compliances, for example, the KYCs, et cetera, they come into play. Some of the issues uh, somebody did not put in and there was a freeze on his account. There are n number of use cases and scenarios where customer service has a role to play. Now, coming to the technology piece of it, because we are technologists here and we would like to dwell more into the technology part of it. With the increase in the computational power, what we see is that uh, things which could, we could not do in the past, for example, natural language processing, which got more involved. AI, AI has been there for nearly five, six decades now. If you look at the uh, research paper started way back in 1960s when AI was first discussed. AI is basically an umbrella under which you have different uh, mechanisms. You have machine learning was part of that and then you have deep learning which is again a part of uh, uh, AI which is a bit deeper. So there are various uh, ways of doing it in machine learning. People just put it on the blanket of umbrella of AI and they said we are AI enabled but there are various nuances of AI and how AI can take uh, the various things forward, right? So you have experience of chatbots uh, in various customer service, which is chatbot is an example of NLP, which is natural language processing. And the, the advancement of natural language processing is what you're seeing is the Gen AI, the large language model. And there are different large language models, one from Google, one from Microsoft, one from OpenAI. There are n number of models which are coming up and you can develop this model on your home itself such a powerful tool which is already there, the codes are available. You can develop it on your own uh, laptop also. It will be limited, but it'll be, it'll be, you will be able to run those LLMs. So that is the power of the uh, computational power that you see now. Now I would like to, uh, from, a, uh, from a customer service experience perspective, I'd like from, uh, to, to start with, I'll ask Deepu to talk about something uh, on the role 
the technology is playing in enhancing customer service within the BFSR sector and how organizations can leverage emerging technologies, which I spoke about, like AI, and chatbots to improve customer experiences. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Tata, and uh, morning, everybody. From the body language, you know, I, could, I can sense a lot of eagerness, you know, so we'll, you know, try and add, uh, you know, value to, you know, whatever we are saying. So the uh, question is basically around, you know, how we leverage technology and BFSI, you know, and how can we, therefore, you know, enhance customer experience. Uh, I'll not focus much on theory because that you can find out through a Google search, but I'll try and share some practical examples, you know, which you may not be able to get unless you speak to, you know, people who are practi you know, practicing it in the industry. So for a minute, let's just, just go back four years, you know, let's go back to COVID, right? And uh, as was rightly pointed out, when suddenly call centers were shut down, then the only way you could continue to offer uninterrupted servicing, you know, was through chatbots. So for example, we only had to communicate to our customers, you know, to use our bot. And also bots need, you know, assistance because bots are trained on the past. What if a completely new scenario comes up? So what we would do in such a case is transfer it immediately from the bot to a human being and then take it through to completion. So for the customer, there was no break in service. So that was, you know, one way by which, you know, we were able to offer, you know, continued servicing. And in the Indian context also, what's important is we need to make it multilingual because customers do not come speaking only in English. A lot of digital assets are offered only in English. So we offered a bot in Indian languages as well, you know, including a website. And that's how, you know, we were able to ramp up servicing. So that is just one example. The other is, you know, I'll talk about maybe just two, two, three specific examples. Now, let's say if you have motor insurance, normally what would happen if you crashed your car? You would basically, you know, approach the insurance company, they would appoint a surveyor who would come to the site of the crash, assess the extent of damage, and then submit his report. Today, it can be done in 20 minutes thanks to technology, up to certain amounts. In case you crash your car, you don't need to call a surveyor. You can basically take photographs and upload them using the mobile app. The AI engine will assess the extent of damage and convey the amount to you. You, can, you give a consent to digital payments, the money is immediately transferred. So in 20 minutes, what it should take days can happen. That's one example. Similarly, IoT, you know, you all have heard of Internet of Things. So when Internet of Things was launched in insurance, we could make the car smart. You know, by launching a device, we could give feedback to the customer. This was launched globally in many countries. But what happens in the Indian context? Many people do not drive the car on their own. You know, the drivers drive the car. Then how do you add value? So what we did is, if let's say there is a working couple and the driver drops them in the office, to office in the morning, and then the kids to school, in the afternoon while they continue in office and he has to pick up kids and bring them back home or take them to, the, to a daycare facility, and parents are worried, you know, are they really being dropped? Should the car go on a completely different route? You know, because of the device, you can get an alert. So we call that geofencing. Now, some of these experiences are not possible without the use of technology. So that's how, you know, technology has played a role, you know, and COVID was, a, was an acid test, and how technology will continue to play a role, you know, going forward, in terms of not only solving current customer problems, but also bringing in new experiences which would not be possible. Yeah, Deepu, thanks. So, <clears throat> that really puts to perspective as to what uh, some of the real-life examples are uh, where technology can help. So, Deepu spoke about the, uh, the how the human-assisted bot enhancements can be done and then I spoke about the, uh, the IOTs and the new technologies which are coming in. To reduce the, uh, the uh, load on the call center, number one, and then increase the service, customer service experience. That is very important because unless the customer gets satisfied, it is uh, very difficult for a company's brand or company's image to uh, take, take it forward. So with that, I'll come to uh, uh, Santil. So uh, he's the head of marketing for, for Bank of Baroda. So uh, from, a, from a customer service perspective, right, so there are a lot of customer serve data which is there. And from a privacy laws, we are supposed to keep those very confidential, right? So from a service perspective, uh, how do you ensure that the marketing data has been properly anonymized, uh, clustered to start with some of the uh, mathematical clustering algorithms for k-means are there, right? So k-means algorithms. So there are very techniques that you can do for uh, targeting, segregating, and analyzing customers. Uh, so, so how do you how do you take this from a customer service perspective? How do you uh, what are what are your thoughts uh, as to what are the uh, challenges in this highly regulated uh, BFSI industry and the opportunities of delivering ex exceptional customer service while ensuring compliance with the industry standards and regulations? Yeah. So, uh, being in the banking sector, uh, Bank of Baroda, we all know that uh, we are one of the largest public sector bank. And our customer base is around 16 crore. And the beauty of it is that 
or the age group of the customer. The age group around 30 percent of a customer or senior citizens, another 30 percent or less than 28 years of age, and in between around another 40 percent is the middle age group. So there is a wide uh, uh, difference or gap in the customer base of the bank or any any large financial institution. Now, how do we actually uh, uh, segment uh, these customer and what kind of uh, channel uh, these uh, customer segment require for addressing their customer issue is is what uh, is a the bigger roadmap or picture for most of the large financial institutions. Now, let me give some thought on some example. Um, uh, the, the youngsters uh, presently who are um, going to college, now as you see that digitization has completely taken over. And the kind of transactions they are doing is uh, uh, pretty phenomenal. And if you take um, a college going student or a, a student who is there in a um, uh, hostel, Almost, um, I have seen that from from some of the example that in my own family example that they are doing more than 200 transactions using a UPI app. So, so what is there some something uh, which uh, organizations can work upon? That's a huge number of transactions which are happening digitally. So, uh, let me quote an example. Uh, my daughter, I, I quoted the example in one more session also. She used to have this UPI app and she's doing a lot of transactions and. The behavior of the customer is uh, totally uh, uh, exposed or we have that information of the uh, customer from the type of transactions they are doing because entire digital. I know what time, what type of uh, mineral water she drinks, which canteen she goes, what kind of, uh, um, of to whom she is sharing the payment. So every time I ask, uh, I, I want to replenish her bank account, I ask her statement. So give, she send me the statement and from the statement I can very well see that and analyze what 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 exactly she is doing in the college and how 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 she is going about so that's very interesting that we are we are actually this was just a small example i'm giving we are sitting on a huge data of transaction that too when it comes to digital transaction there is tremendous scope for analyzing the uh, behavior of the customer and what kind of uh, uh, channel or what kind of a medium uh, banking or financial institution or what kind of product we should pitch to that customer is all thrown upon and that's where the picture of uh, large transaction analysis when it comes into place the AI and other tools and other chatbot and other interactive uh, elements come into picture so from a banking perspective I'm very confident that the the number of transactions and the a wide range of customer base we are having there are there are many large use cases where we can actually bring customer uh, access or customer experience with the uh, with excellence together i'll just uh, uh, reiterate one more point that most of the financial institution we always think that we want to give the customer a banking experience banking experience right we have our services and one we want the customer to have the banking experience. But the actual requirement is the customer, what kind of experience he is having with the bank. So there's a lot of difference. We, 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 we actually push the banking service to the customer assuming that okay we make a tab we we use a mobile app and and give this service to him and think that he's all happy. But after that what happens whether the experience he's having with that application or with that uh, platform is what actually determined and it's actually going to be the key differentiator amongst the BFSA brands where it's not only product, it's not technology, it's not different platform, but what experience is going to get from that institution. And that is where a lot of our uh, the, the kind of technology tools we are speaking on, AI comes into place. Today, we are opening more than 3.5 lakh accounts in a day in the bank. And we are handling in a website nearly uh, uh, in, in a month more than uh, uh, 20 lakh uh, website hits are there in the website. So the lot of interactions are happening to the, for the customers and how we are going to manage 
that uh, this type of transactions and how we are going to actually interact and bring a better experience to customers. There are a lot of uh, use cases where we are going to use with this uh, AI tools. Now coming to the uh, direct question on the compliance uh, angle. It's exactly uh, digitization and AI is uh, certainly bringing a lot of uh, uh, area where we need to ensure uh, compliance and uh, we need to have that um, uh, data uh, uh, protection act with the previous session. We have seen that kind of uh, uh, data protection and all, all these tools we are uh, having a large use case. That's the thing. Great. So <laughs> from a banking perspective, uh, what happened is that first you had the normal human banking which started and then when the advent of internet came, so we had the internet banking coming in first and then with mobile. So that's how the progression happened, right? So you had the internet banking and then the mobile banking and after that people thought that why don't we merge all of these and call it an omni-channel experience, right? Omni-channel means that through all the channels, whatever you have, whether it is your bank, whether it is the internet banking, whether it's a digital banking, the experience should be same across. But what we refer basically is that only the digital piece, right? When we talk about omni-channel, we, when we refer to only the uh, digital part of it, which is the internet and the mobile piece as of now, right? So <clears throat> from a customer experience, right? And uh, unfortunately, the omni-channel experience, uh, the omni-channel flows in most of the internet banking and mobile banking are not the same, right? So there will be certain things which are there in internet banking, there are certain things because that is how there's no standard as, as, a, as such because it, it evolved and banks also evolved. And uh, like, like uh, Mr. Mali also mentioned, I also mentioned yesterday, the most of the solutions in, in the banks are vendor driven, right? So whatever the vendor gives to you, you just accept it, right? So that is, uh, that is how it is. And you see that there is a difference in flow in the omni-channel. So um, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Mr. Vijayan Sharma, Right. So with increasing uh, emphasis on only channel customer experience, how are the uh, banks and the BFSI companies integrating various communication channels such as mobile apps, social media and traditional uh, channels to provide seamless service to the customers? Yeah, thanks uh, Saurabh. I think it's a very relevant question. Currently, you know, the way things are moving and you rightly pointed out that uh, you know, probably, especially in BFSI, I think when we talk about omni-channel experience, you normally include your digital channels, you forget about your ATMs, you forget about your branches, you forget about your call centers. And uh, as you rightly again pointed out that most of these uh, platforms or technology are driven by, you know, vendors. Uh, I like to probably, you know, uh, go back a little and, uh, you, know, you know, bring in a couple of perspective which I believe if you know thought through well in the initial part of the you know journey or strategizing itself when you're planning your customer experience journey when you're planning your customer uh, you know service excellence uh, strategy uh, i think those are the pro those are the things if you think through it will be able to solve you better uh, i genuinely believe that most of the organization where they go wrong is getting the culture right we talk about technology we talk about a lot of tools we are talking about you know, AI, automation, chatbot, but we forget that these are all tools and enablers. We, these are not actually going to solve the problem of the mindset, which your employee has to have. And I'm touching a very different topic here, but uh, most of the organization, including BFSI, where they get wrong is getting the employee culture right in terms of having that service excellence or service, you know, uh, mindset. And how do we solve that is a very different <laughs> ball game altogether. But you know, are we able to solve that through technology? Yes. Is technology an enabler to solve those mindset issues? I would say no. Because these are softer issues and this probably require a different level of discussion here. But coming to the point what, what you mentioned, uh, Saurabh, is look, integrating everything is very important. But as I said, when you're solving for customer experience or a customer service excellence, you need to be first clear that what is the experience you want to deliver. Let me give you an example. You know, we all travel and uh, you, you will travel by Vistara and you will travel by Indigo, right? Do you get the same experience in both the airlines? Probably not, yeah? Do you think it is planned or it is by default or it is planned? I think it is planned, right? Vistara wants to give you a different level of experience and Indigo wants to give you a different level of experience. They both are very clear in terms of what they want to deliver to the customers when it comes to service excellence. 
I think that is where we need clarity and every organization should have depending on the customer segment. And I think was also mentioning that, you know, their customer, you know, data or their entire base is very different. So when you want to serve a senior citizen customer, what is the experience you want to give? When you want to serve a youngster, a Gen Z, what, do you want, what is the experience you want to, want to give? So getting that part right is very important, that what is that objective of the customer service which you want to extend, and then you bring in the channel to deliver those services. Now for a senior citizen customer, probably a digital channel doesn't matter much. You know, probably you should be looking at your brand channels, how do you deliver those services there and give the same experience which you want to deliver to a Gen Z, but in a different way. So I think so, so getting the culture right, getting the segmentation right, and you know, getting that clarity that what is that delivery you want to ex you know, give that experience to the customer is very, very critical when you're planning for it. And once you get these two or three aspects right, then bringing in vendors and technology is the easier part of the job. I think most of the organization will be able to get that right if you get the culture right, if you get the objective right, if you plan well and strategize well in terms of what is the delivery which you're going to happen. So that's my, my thought on this, honestly. Great. So Vijendra talked about one of the very important uh, aspect of, uh, of, the, of designing the client experience or client journey right from the beginning, right? That is one piece of it. So my take on it is that the customer also get tuned to what the experience is and is expecting it, right? The Higa exa example of Indigo versus Vistara, right? Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a different example, but in the banking sector also is like that, right? So you have different experiences, but the customer gets tuned or is expecting that, Are, mirko to aise hi milega. right? So that is something which is, which is something we have to be, be conscious of. And I mean, that is how people are also, so somebody had said that if you, if you uh, do it, if you treat people, it, you're telling people how to behave with you, right? So if you allow them to do it, uh, the, 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 the organization like banks or, or insurance companies. So people will get tuned. So this is how I'm going to get, this is the experience that I'm going to get. So the complaint level also go down. So that is one part of it is again, you're, you're programming the person as to how or what the experience he is expected to get. So one part is that you're planning a good experience, but another part is that the customer or the end user also gets tuned psychologically as this is the experience that I'm going to get, right? So while being on the topic, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Meena, he has been in the banking industry for very long. So I would like to ask him a very critical question. We talked about the corporate culture. So what role does corporate culture play in fostering a customer-centric mindset within the BFSI organization? Thank you, Saurabh. See, the corporate culture he talks, before I talk the corporate culture, uh, we individuals are different, but still we have some unique things. So our requirements, our needs change. So the corporates develop their own behavior and the principles and based on the experience and policies, key how they are going to serve the customers and what type of customers they want to uh, serve and where they want to do the business. So this is what the basis is. See, look at this honeybee, how he goes to the different floors, but generally he goes, she goes to the floor where she likes and she gets the best honey. So she selects the floors in that area, though he, she doesn't leave any floor untouched, but she takes more time. Same, same way, the corporates, based on the data, based on their experience, based on the customer, they find out which are the customers they should serve and how to, and now based on the customer experience, further they know what is the customer requirement. What type of customer expectations are there, how the customer wants them to be served, and how the customer wants them to be approached. Even when you give a message to the customer, sometimes they do not like this message because he's busy, because the time of the message delivery is not proper. If you deliver a message of account credit at midnight, who likes it? But if you give in the morning, after uh, 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock, definitely he likes. But if there is a, some serious issue or repeated transactions are happening and you give a message to the customer even at midnight, customer will not mind because you are protecting. So the corporate has to develop the culture based on the customer experience, based on their business policy and that 
technology today helps them to design it in that way, the delivery, the response, and the to meet the customer expenses, experience in their expectations, in their own language, at their convenience. I think that is the only way the corporate can do better. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Shaji. So, so just uh, giving an example of the experience, various experiences that have, I mean, most everybody is having uh, online banking, right, nowadays. So what are the, uh, you have the security constraints also. So how do you balance the security and the ease of uh, customer experience, right, to, so as to say. So for example, in one bank, uh, earlier, I don't want to name the bank, but first when you log in, right, you're given username, password, and then an OTP came, right? Then OTP is an eight-digit OTP, okay? So people were really frustrated. After that, it was reduced to six-digit. So one bank had a military-grade security system. It was so difficult to log into that mobile app, right? Don't want to name the bank again. So it had a military-grade security. They call it military-grade security, okay? So they, it had a token-based system, which you had to load it, and then people used to really go in circles as to how to log into the system. They're going to log into the system is very important. The first step is not, is that they could not even complete the first step, right? So that is the difference. And then people would say that this is what I'm going to expect, right? So of, of course, people are changing. Their, those experiences are getting changed over a period of time. And like I mentioned, customer service is two pieces. One is the first piece is that the basic, basic journey of basic things getting done. And second is the, the jeopardy track or the problem track where the customer faces some problem. For example, the nomination is not updated, right? So how do you go about it? So even after sending it on the online channels, the nomination still does not get updated. So there are various issues, many, many organizations have that. But this is how we're going to see and help and see how the technology can really help in doing certain things uh, which, which will solve these kind of issues. So uh, I'll come to uh, uh, Mr. Sharma, who is the director of the uh, company called Calera and acquired by Tata Communications now. So he has been in this uh, customer service game for quite a long time. So uh, I'd like to ask him, what are the trends you foresee in shaping the future of customer service in uh, the BFSI and other sectors? And how should organizations prepare to meet evolving customer expectations and preferences? Very important, customer expectations and preferences. So thank you very much uh, for this question, Saurav. So, you know, when I was talking, I was listening to Deepu and the Vijayendra Sharma, the main important crux of oh, communication with the customer or customer service comes with the channels. When you talk about the channels, the omni-channel experience customer want. And as Vijender Sharma rightly said, that you know where your customer is, you are dealing with three generations. Okay, today there, there is a millennium, there is Gen Gs, and there are golden age customer. So every customer cannot be go on a digital channel, every customer cannot go on a traditional communication channel. So you have to balance between how do you provide service. So I'll give you example, both the example and uh, answering the question also and the expectation. Like uh, Deepu said, uh, the, uh, you take the, there is a car accident and you take the photograph and then you claim. I'll tell you, we are working with the uh, insurance company where with the help of video APIs, we are reducing their claim settlement time by 75%. It was a claim settlement time was earlier 30 days. We came down to seven days now because with the help of the integration of our video KPIs in their digital touch point where somebody used to go to the place, see, do it, report back, and then report go to the multiple uh, authorities in the organization and then claim processed it, which is we have come down to 75%. This is the claim settlement time with our help. The another example is like as he was, uh, Mr. Saurav was just talking, like mobile banking. You do a transaction. There is a already communication channel integrated. Today's day that you know when you make a transaction, high, like for me customer service, my bank, if I do a high transaction, they the first the channel is they send me OTP. I uh, punch in the OTP and the transaction is completed. But the second, you know, within 15 seconds, I get a call from my bank saying that do you authorize this transaction? Because we know there are so many fraud happened in the. OTP uh, related area. So two channels involved here where my customer service, I'm very happy with my bank. The third part is customer service, I say, as Saurav was also saying, there's the second part of from the onboarding. When you do the onboarding, I tell you there are three aspects of it. Onboarding, engaging, and then retention. 
if you are continuously engaged with your customers on the different channels where they are complete your data you have all the data points of the customer you can you know retain them every there are studies shows that every uh, customer who's happy with your service he will tell six people in the, his group but if one customer who's not happy with your services he will tell you 30 he will tell 13 people in the group so you cannot take the chances on this and how you ex you reach on that expectation is totally understand the another example live example i'll tell you there is a stock market app you done the transaction but the transaction he made it uh, because of the otp and the network he was not able to complete the transaction so then he reached to the chatbot chatbot also expectation as he was asking me you have to make it uh, the not the checklist completely on the ai based you have checklist then but you have to keep the one more uh, you know option available that you can put your own thoughts in the chatbot when you pick up from there you actually get the answer resolution to that and i got the call from the uh, app and so they they resolved it within 24 hours that's where the customer service and i'm very happy about that so these are the aspect where you first thing is listen to your customer if it's a customer service we are saying there is a problem if there is a customer service coming to it then there is a problem so either we are not engaging to our customers in properly and channels the all the channels wherever he is available so right message right time and right time and the right channel you have to adopt and that's what i think so there's a expectation you can reach all right sunil so so what we are seeing basically from a trends perspective, the, the basically the what are the trends uh, which will shape the future of customer service, right? So from a technology trend perspective, you'll see more use of automation, more use of the AI techniques, modeling of the various uh, uh, events, right? For example, I give an example of login, customer login. In one bank, you have this experience of putting in your username, password, and then uh, an OTP comes, and then only you can log into any of the screens to do any of the transactions. In some other bank, you just put in your login and password. And believe me, the password of that bank, I'm using the particular bank, I've not changed in the last 20 years. Whereas the RBI guidelines say that you have to change passwords every 90 days, right? Most of the banks are doing it. But this particular bank, I have not changed the password, most of you must be using it. So the last 20 years, it's still working fine. And it <coughs> predicts, it has got a fantastic backend engine, which predicts the user behavior, right? And it will tell you, that whether that user is authentic or not, right? So that is the kind of level of automation which is going to come in. And they have been using it for pretty long and they have been very successful in doing so, right? And there has not been any breaches of, any, any reported breaches as of now from the user login perspective from that party. So, so the, from trends perspective, we'll see more of automation coming in, more of AI methodologies, for example, the various modeling. So what we see is basically, basically how the models are are utilized in real time. So AI is very compute intensive, right? So you, so you require... Can I add something here? Yeah. The recent data, December, December India has opened 43 lakh DMAT accounts. It means if you calculate every second, there is a more than 60-70 DMAT account was opened every second. How this is possible is basically the customer expectations have increased. They don't have time to do the KYC. You have to have all the channels so from OTPs to this, uh, you know, turning out to be a video KYC, then KYC and then you are onboarded. 60 plus customer every second getting boarded on DMATICA. After the COVID, if you see more than 20 million people have opened their DMAT accounts and they are like, you know, new age investor to raise it, who's helping our stock market also to not to go down with the, when the FI has removed the money. There's a separate discussion, but I'm saying that kind of expectation today's customer, they, they need speed, they need convenience and effortlessly they have to, you know, you have to uh, change your transition from one channel to another channel. That's what today's date a customer is like you know ai help there and you know most of the data points you have you generate those patterns of the customer and then you deliver your service right so from a technology perspective we'll see what we see in the future from a customer service perspective is that you have more automation coming in with increase in uh, compute power right so you saw how the computational power increased over a period of time right now the mobile phones that you're carrying has more horsepower of a supercomputer of 1980s right so, uh, so uh, what, what you're going to see is that you'll have more and more computational power is increasing. You have more risk-based processor coming in. 
So you had the Moore's law, right? So I don't know whether you are aware of the Moore's law from the, uh, from the transistor technologies. Anybody from electronics and computer science would appreciate that, or even from physics, right? So you had the Moore's law which says that every two years, the, the density of the transistors would increase, right? So transistors are the basic building blocks of computers. So we have reached the Moore's law level, but what is happening is that just like the real estate, so instead of increasing the density in one particular uh, square mm of silicon, what's happening is that you're increasing the density uh, upwards, you're scaling vertically. So what is happening right now is that you're scaling vertically. So the Moore's law still holds good as of now. Even we have reached about three nanometers of fabrication uh, complexity now, where uh, Apple has brought in the new M3 chip, which is three nanometers, which is the latest chip having a three nanometer of uh, VLSI technology, right? The density is pretty, pretty low. So what we are seeing is that the computational power is going to increase. The software is yet to compete or yet to catch up with the hardware, hardware power, processing power. That is something that we'll see, that the software is going to catch up with the hardware processing powers of that. Because with, with a single, if you use a single M3 chip of, of, the, uh, of Apple, right? So Apple has moved out from the CISC-based system to risk-based system, right? So from CISC base is very complex. So one clock cycle, right? So what happens in CISC is that you put one clock, 10 clock cycles and you get one output. In risk-based system, you put one clock cycle and every clock cycle you get an output. So all your mobile computers, mobile devices that you're using are risk-based, ARM-based processors, they're all risk-based. So they're all risk-based, they're not CISC-based at all. CISC has failed miserably. And also in the BFSI sector, we'll be seeing more use of risk-based technology which is coming in. Thirdly, what we're going to see from a technology perspective is that the quantum computing, right? So comp quantum computing is a technology which was again uh, given by uh, one of the physicists, one of the Nobel laureates some time back, right? And then this got developed because the technology was not there. The quantum computing is only evolved now. It is evolving at a very, very rapid space and people are coming out with chips, right? So the quantum computing chips are coming out. In fact, IBM has come out with a thousand qubit chip which, is, which will be used. And that will help in securing uh, the, the, the encryption. The, right now, the encryption is what we're using is 3 dash AES and all of that. With quantum computing, this encryption will just go away. You can break this encryption in one second. So we have to, again, think of how the encryption is going to happen. Fourth thing that we're going to see from a technology perspective is something known as the fully homomorphic encryption. What is happening is that you can encrypt a user name or, or a user, uh, for example, my name, Saurav Data, I can increase, encrypt it in what is known as a hash, hash function. Hash function is a trapdoor function in which you can only encrypt it one way. You cannot reverse encrypt it, right? Decrypt it. So you use a hash function to encrypt it, what was talked early in the morning, which is known as anonymization. You anonymize the data using a hash function. And again, again there are biases. You can, of course, put some bias to, to encrypt that. But what you see in FHE, the fully holomorphic encryption chips are coming out in which you can use encrypted data for your customer segmentation, for your customer analysis, for your data analysis. All the analysis can be done and there will be no data leaks. So that is something we're going to see. That is a hardware development which is already in progress and we'll be seeing out these chips coming out in the next couple of years. So these are some of the advancements in technology which is happening and you'll, you'll see the benefits of this in the coming years, right? With that, uh, we have some time. I'll open the floor for questions. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, good afternoon everyone. I am Amol Inamdar. I am the co-founder and CEO of Inaria Tech. Okay, we are a startup. Uh, to the point which Vijayendra sir mentioned actually, I wanted to touch upon that point. Uh, we already are working with a large private sector bank where we have implemented a service quality assessment module, you know, almost 5000 plus branches. Uh, the point that you mentioned about the culture, I wanted to touch upon that point. Uh, we have also, you know, looking at signed up for, with some other banks as well. Uh, some of the NBFCs or some organizations that we have come across, the culture point is something that came up over there. Uh, they said that, Amol, you have tech ready, but uh, whether my people will be in a position to adopt that tech, uh, whether I'll have that, uh, you know, culture that people will be in a position to actually quickly align and come to the system and all. 
Uh, my take on this is, uh, you know, we have recently seen the RBI circular that has come on the compliance monitoring automation. Uh, if we are not adopting tech, then the regulator is forcing adoption at some point in time. Uh, we are not far away from this situation for most of the areas within banking, BFSI. Uh, today it has, RBI has done this on compliance, tomorrow it might do on ops raise, third time it might do on customer service and all. Uh, my view uh, is, uh, you know, that organizations themselves will have to maybe uh, take that stri uh, you know, first step to take adoption within their own, uh, you know, strides because if you leave it to the employees or the, you know, the culture part, then sometimes there might be challenges like this where some regulators will have to force it. Uh, I wanted to understand, sir, your thoughts on this. So thanks uh, for bringing this actually and, and you, you know, rightly mentioned that you can't leave it to the uh, employees. Culture is always top down, right? You know, it has to be top down approach, otherwise it will be very, very difficult. Then, then will happen like what we see in today. But, you know, I'll, I'll probably, uh, you know, uh, you know, come to a point where, you know, one thing sort of talk about technology and how technology is helping. Another point is getting the softer aspect right and balancing. We bankers and entire banking fraternity walk on a very tight rope when it comes to m marrying, you know, customer service, technology, regulation and, and security. I mean, these are four elements which we have to stitch it together to deliver a customer experience. There is no industry currently, at least I can't, you know, imagine an industry which walks on such a tight rope when it comes to delivering customer experience, at the same time ensuring security, at the same time ensuring regulation compliance. and compliance. I, I, I don't think there is any industry which walks on a such a tight rope <coughs> and that is why it is, it is very, very important for the banking industry to get it right and we can show that, you know, actually we can show the part to other industry also and which is already happening. So, you know, I'm glad that you asked this question because this is where, including in my organization or in my previous organization, this is a very, very important question being asked on every single day basis. This is not a one-time question because it is evolving on a daily basis. Technology is evolving, customer needs are evolving, the way fintech are delivering a customer experience, that has obviously changed the entire mindset and the expectation of the customer and bank has to, banks, incumbent banks or even new age bank has to, has to deliver that similar experience and in order and again within the ambit of regulation and techno, you know, compliance. So that becomes challenging but at the same time, I think the onus is on the, uh, you know, banks to deliver that and uh, technology is already there as an enabler but as I said, it cannot be done into bits and pieces. It, you cannot use technology to solve one particular problem. It has to be top down. You get the culture right, you get the adoption right, you get the tools right, you do the segmentation right, and then you plan your journey accordingly. Uh, I think it's a, it's a pretty uh, broad based, uh, you know, approach which we have to take. It cannot be, most of the issues, including in, in our organization, we sometimes take approach which is to solve a problem. But you're not really realizing how you're going to solve the surrounding issues which will lead to another problem later on. So. Uh, that's that's sure, the approach sir. I think. Thanks. In fact, I come with that banking experience almost two decades. So what you are saying, we have seen that uh, little bit of alignment from the team members to adopt technology. I feel that now organizations will have to uh, take that. Most of the time, time. When, when we implement any technology, what we forget is we have to get the people along with that. So it will be one department, one that's product right. or one particular issue will be implementing and adopting. Getting people, everyone is very, very important. Yeah. I agree. Thank you. Thank yes, you. please. Yes, thank you so much. Um, my name is Siddharth. Um, I, I'm, I'm coming from Arbutus Consultants. We work in solar energy largely mm -hmm. and we assist companies in their scope to emissions. So uh, this is a question to Dr. Saurav uh, Datta. Yeah. So we, we have noticed that how the banks have adopted technology and IT to serve customers. Uh, so what we're wondering is how are banks going to adopt technology to monitor uh, climate related disclosures and behavior of their customers and borrowers? Uh, and perhaps another question to uh, Mr. Senthil Kumar. Uh, the idea that you said you, know, you, you are able to estimate patterns or consumption patterns of youngsters, uh, do you also notice any climate sensitive consumption or any climate uh, related consumption as well? Thank All you right. so much. All right, in the, in the, in the uh, yeah, in the interest of time, I would like to answer both of this. So from an uh, ESG perspective, right? So what you're talking about is basically the ESG perspective. So banks are really uh, not up to the level which is required from an ESG perspective, they're just gearing up banks and BFSI as well. 
So we are just awakening up to the, BF, the, to the ESG and the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, WTA and all the requirements which are there, right? So we are, we are trying to reduce our carbon footprint and solar energy is definitely one of them. And with the increase of uh, the efficiency of the solar panels which are coming up, there are four or five types of solar panels, but with the increase of solar panels and the, uh, the other technology renewable, for example, wind, uh, water I don't consider renewable because it damages the rivers and uh, you have other ocean technologies and all of those are there. So uh, from a banking perspective, definitely from a bank, it's a big uh, resource hogger in terms of electricity when it comes to data center, right? So data centers definitely are the future and we will see that the data centers are more getting more greener in nature using renewable energies. In fact, most of some of the banks in other advanced countries have complete, uh, uh, I mean, carbon zero footprint for the DCs. So that we are seeing in, in other advanced countries, but in India it's yet to come in. We are using more and more of uh, REs and government is giving them the carbon credit, something known as a CE, right, which is given to the uh, organization who are using, uh, using renewable energies such as uh, solar, wind and other ocean uh, water technologies, right. To coming to his piece is that… I just, to, I just add on to that, okay. <clears throat> in Bank of Baroda we recently started a, we created a sub-brand called Bob Earth which uh, uh, encompasses all the initiatives with regard to sustainability and a greener planet, right? And very recently or very shortly, we are going to also come up with a green deposit scheme. Very shortly, we are coming up with that scheme, which RBI has given us a clear guidelines on green deposit. That is also in the unveil unveiling from the backside. Also, a lot of um, sustainable uh, initiatives like solar powered branches, from the bank side, not from the customer side, from the bank side, solar power branches we are running. We are using paperless office with totally, in, in almost our entire corporate office is paperless. No approvals goes through paper. It's completely paperless. We are migrating this paperless to zones, regions, and also to our other administrative offices. So certainly, in, in fact, in, even in our um, MD and CEO's mandate for this year is sustainability is uh, one of the primary area where from the bank side we are looking into. I'm sure that all other banks are also in the same foray. So there's a lot of work uh, which, uh, which is going going ahead and rightly said this is the right time that the realization has come and uh, from the BFSA sector also I'm sure that a lot of initiatives will be uh, quickly uh, be rolling out shortly. Thank you. The central government initiative called Solar Rooftop, right? So the government have initiated and they're giving some subsidies and the banks are also trying to give in pitch in with the loans, right? So that is also one of the one of the main events which are going on. Right? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful session. Wonderful session on customer service. Thank you so much, distinguished panelists. I uh, request Dr. Datta. Sir, could you please hand over mementos to your fellow panelists? Clear, Rajesh. 